Is Earth really the only planet with life or is something else out there? Here's investigative reporter Shelby Myers with a story that just might make you rethink everything. It's been a debate for decades. Are aliens out there and have they ever made contact with us? After 45 years of keeping it a secret from his own family, a Gulf Coast man's declining health has given him a reason to write a book and leave his legacy. Calvin Parker is now ready to tell the story of the event that would change his life forever. Do you ever get any feelings and flashbacks when you come out here? No, it's a uh, change. It's hard to feel anything when you come out here. What do you think about the whole experience? Think it happened? I think something happened down there. I'm not at all sure what happened. Something happened to them, the way they were upset. You don't fake fear. You know, it was, he was scared. He was scared out of his mind. In 1973, Calvin Parker was 19, a hard worker who just wanted to build a home and raise a family. But those plans would be derailed during a fishing trip in Pascagoula. A real bright beam appeared all over us. But it kind of blinded me for a second. And when I got my vision back, I seen three bulky looking creatures coming toward us. Parker will tell you because of this night, he spent the last 45 years in hiding, scared to face the curious and unrelenting public eye. We'd get up and go to work in the morning. Nobody would never know and they won't make us out to be idiots. But after suffering a stroke and having two open heart surgeries, in a rare interview, Parker is recounting to me the night that changed his life. And we pulled up and I noticed there was posted signs there. And I said, Charlie, you know, maybe we don't need to go fishing here. He said, no, that's fine. And that's when I noticed some blue hazy lights reflecting coming across from my back out across the water. So I stood up thinking that I was going to go to jail for trespassing. Just north of where Ingalls Shipyard now sits, Parker and his fishing buddy, 42 year old Charles Hickson, would do anything but fish that night. I seen three bulky looking creatures coming toward us, and they was probably four, four and a half, five foot tall. They built like football players, but I noticed they kind of moved mechanical wise and they was floating off the ground. By the time we stood up and turned around, they was there on us all at one time. So two of them got a hold of Charlie, one of them got a hold of myself, and instantly I felt like that all. Uh, I just got relaxed. Parker claims he and Hickson were levitated into the spacecraft. There was an examination room, what I call it. And the old big ugly creature that brought me in, he took me and laid me on an examination table. And he just backed up out of the way. I couldn't move or anything. I could, all I could do was look. And there was something about the size of a deck of cards that came out of the uh, ceiling and it hoovered about a foot in front of my eyes and then it went to the right side of my head and it clicked, went behind my head and it clicked, went to the left side of my head and clicked and then straight to the front and then it shot back up in the ceiling. And that's when I noticed some kind of little ruffling noise and this uh, more feminine looking creature came out. She looked completely different than the uh, what I call the robot, because he moved like a robot, just mechanical wise. She looked kind of feminine looking and had fingers, regular fingers and all, come over and pinched me on the side of the cheek. And then she took her finger and run down my throat and got behind that little thing that hangs down back there and tried to come up in my nasal cavity. And that was when it started hurting and I started choking and I got scared and uh, she just kind of telepathically told me, you know, don't be afraid, we're not going to hurt you. And with those words, Parker says the aliens dropped he and Hickson back off on the bank. Frozen in fear, Parker didn't want to let anyone know what happened. Hickson, however, said they had to tell somebody, so they called the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. And I said, could I help you? He said, yeah, I've had something happen, but said, you're going to laugh if I tell you what it is. I said, look, fella, go ahead and tell me I'm busy. 
what happened? He said, I got picked up by a UFO. I laughed. <laughs> he said, I told you he's going to laugh. Still, former Jackson County Captain Glenn Ryder told the men to come into the station. Jackson County deputies had two choices that night. They could choose to believe Parker and Hickson had really been taken from the banks of the Pascagoula River, like they said, or they could figure out if they were lying. So deputies stuck a secret tape recorder inside an interrogation room back at the station. And it's what they heard on those tapes that made them believe the two we're not lying. And they were upset. They, I figured they'd say, well, look, we got these guys food, but it wasn't that. They were still. The boy especially was upset. The men would take lie detector tests and pass. Ufologists and researchers flew in right away to interview and hypnotize the two, concluding they did experience something traumatic. The two were even sent to Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi to make sure they weren't radioactive. It's a circus, media circus. Within days, the story went global. After the two were checked out, former WALA TV reporter Rennie Brabner caught up with them. Up at the emergency room door, there's a line of sheriff's cars out there. We went in with our cameras going and uh, at least for the first time saw the two guys. Brabner says to this day, it's still something viewers never seem to forget. There's a reasonable chance that they'll say, wait a minute, didn't you cover those guys getting on the UFO? What do you think? Most of the stories you do, they're gone tomorrow or the next day or whenever. Uh, and it's always intrigued me a little bit that that had some legs, some interest, particularly years and years and years later. Like Captain Ryder, Brabner too believes something happened that night, but he isn't sure what. I do not think they made it up uh, in the sense that they created out a whole cloth. Um, I have been told that the, uh, particularly uh, Pixon was known to take a drink. Uh, you know, did it, was it at the bottle of a, bottom of a bottle of John Barleycorn? I don't know. Charles Hickson wrote a book on his encounter and spoke numerous times about it. He passed away in 2011. Parker says he's a religious man and believes there's an explanation why he went through what he did. For now, he still ponders why it happened to him. You can't really pin everything down. You don't really know. And that's the point I'm holding now. I don't know what happened. I know something happened. Definitely something to think about. Parker says the city of Pascagoula now plans to place a marker on the banks of the river this summer. We mentioned that this interview is rare since Parker spent most of his life hiding from the spotlight. Well, he says after a year of promoting his new book and speaking, he'll retreat from the spotlight once again. He plans to buy a houseboat and live on it with his wife. Now, if you want to know more about his book, The Closest Encounter, just head to our website, Fox 10 TV.